Hi guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a starter spring in your small engine equipment. So here's the recoil I've got. It's a recoil from a snowblower. The rope's broken as well and the recoil spring is broken. The way I can tell that is when I move the rotor with the rope on counterclockwise, it's all jammed up. It doesn't really spring back. So that's a true sign that your recoil spring has issues. You're better to replace it at this point. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the bolt here. It's a 10 millimeter. And I'm using my nut driver today for that. Now at this point, before you remove the parts from the recoil, I highly recommend that you wear safety glasses. You just never know if that spring's going to pop out. Once you get the bolt off on this recoil, just pull that out. Examine everything inside. Now you can pull out the rope rotor assembly here. If you're going to flip this over, put your hand over here so the parts don't fall off. Have a look at your spring. You can see it's all tangled up in here. You would want your spring to be looking like this one, nice and neat. Now the next step is to remove the spring here from inside the plastic part. Today I'm using an old screwdriver that's very small and thin. I'm going to keep my thumb over the spring. I'm going to reach under the spring here. Just get it started from the bottom. Now grab yourself a good pair of pliers with a lot of leverage. Hold on to that spring and pull out. And here it is. Once you release your pliers, that spring is going to go all over the place. And I'm going to throw the spring here by releasing the pliers just so you can see that. That's what happens. And that's exactly why I recommend wearing safety glasses when you remove a spring like that. So here's the spring I'll be using for this recoil today. It's organ part number 43-426. It will also fit in a lot of Honda engines as well. Now what's handy is that the recoil spring comes wrapped up in this metal casing. The first thing you want to do here is cut the zip tie. Again, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. So now I have to remove it from the casing, grab a good pair of pliers and you want to hold it like that. Now grab a second pair of pliers and just grab it the other way like that. You want to end up with the pliers and the spring in this position. Now what you need to do is hold it like this until you get it in there. If it's too hard with your hands, you can use a pair of vice grips. Now you want to line up the tab on the spring to this plastic part right here. And as you're doing this, make sure the whole spring is going inside the circle here. That is key so that your spring does not tangle itself out. And push in. And once you have it in like this, you can release the pliers. And now the spring is successfully installed. Now you guys watching may say it's not always this easy, Don. What if the spring comes apart or collapses on you? While I'm going to take the spring out, I'm going to let it collapse and I'll show you how to put it in if that happens to you. Okay guys, I've got the spring in my hand here. I'm going to let it collapse. So this is what usually happens to people and it's happened to me too. So don't despair, we're going to get it in there quite easily. Now if your fingers can handle it, just squeeze the spring like this. And you'll have to loop it around. It's a bit tedious. This is my preferred method here. I usually loop it really tight like this, just so that it fits in the recoil part. Now the tighter it gets, the harder it becomes to do this. And if you can do it this way, just grab your pliers again like I did earlier, line it up in here and put it in. Now if you can't do it this way, what you want to do is grab the end of your recoil spring, insert it into the groove, and then just walk it around inside the recoil part here. And just keep circling it inside like this. And 
and it's a bit tricky because it keeps wanting to pop out. But as you get it started, it does become a little easier. And we're on the last lap here. And there it is. Before putting it back together, I'm just going to put a bit of grease in there. And I'm using white lithium grease here. Now examine the condition of the notches here for the spring. If it's damaged, you may need to replace the whole recoil. And these ones here are in good condition. And basically what you need to do now is line up the end of the spring here, the loop, into these notches. So just put it approximately where you think it's going to match up. Now once you have it in and you turn like this, if it wants to go back, that means you have it in properly. And I'll just put another dab of grease right inside here. Now if all the parts fell out like mine, you'll have to put them back in. Start with the spring. It goes in like this. And put the other one in as well. And I'll grab the pawl. You want it in this position here. And you want to get the spring over it like this. Just slide it down. And it's the same over here as well. Now put the center spring inside here. Now the top plate gets installed in this position. Install your bolt. And tighten it up fairly tight. Make sure you can turn it like this and that when you turn the recoil counterclockwise, you want to see the paws come out. If they don't come out, there's an issue with this plate over here. And now at this point, it's time to install the recoil rope. However, I am going to melt a hole for the rope to go in for me to be able to tighten up the spring. I'm going to melt that hole right about an inch or two ahead of the recoil rope hole. I'm just going to heat up an awl and melt it. So I just want to melt the size of a hole here. Make sure your shop is ventilated and do not breathe in that smoke. So you want it nice and clean here. Now you only need to make the hole on the outside, not the inside. So I've put a rope in my handle. The rope is a size number 4.5 by 77 inches. You'll have to figure out the length for your equipment. And at this point here, I'm going to turn the rope rotor about three turns counterclockwise. There's three and I'm going to lock it up and I've got the two holes lined up for the rope. And I'll insert the rope from the inside here. Make a knot at the end. And the reason I made the small hole here is in case your rope isn't in all the way like this. That's where it comes in handy. You pull out the rope, put it into the hole, and then you can turn the whole rotor with the rope counterclockwise quite easily. And I'll have to do it one more turn. If you don't have this hole melted in here, sometimes it can be hard to turn the rotor with the rope because the rope will get jammed up between the metal casing and the plastic here. And there we go. It's nice and tight. It comes back in quite easily. And again, double check that the paws come out when you pull. And that's perfect. So as you saw guys, it's not that bad. However, do take your time, wear safety equipment when you do that. You can wear gloves as well. 
Sometimes that spring can be quite sharp and dangerous for your eyes and hands. And the same procedure will be quite similar on a lot of different power equipment. Thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe and that you're following me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and have a great day.